Hello and welcome to this podcast on the thousand phases of dermatophyte fibromas. because, as you can see in this slide, these lesions may display very different morphological presentations on dermoscopy. Let's see them. As you probably all know, this is the most common and usual pattern of dermatophyte fibromas. This pattern is composed of two structures, a peripheral delicate pigment network and a central white scarlet patch. This pattern has been described as the typical and most common dermoscopic appearance of dermatofibromas in medical literature. Here we have many dermatofibromas with the typical dermoscopic appearance. Depending on the evolution of the lesion, we can see dermatofibromas with a small white scarlet patch and others with a bigger scarlet patch in relation to the peripheral delicate pigment network. I mean, all cases are different evolutionary stages along a sliding scale. Having said that, is there a previous stage? Yes, in the study where the authors collected the most dermatofibromas, the second highest pattern associated with these lesions was the delicate pigment network located throughout the lesions, as we can see in these four examples. We have seen that there are dermatofibromas which present a total delicate pigment network, but is there the other extreme of the range? Yes. We can see all dermatofibromas, which present an extensive scarlet patch in the lesion, forming a total scarlet patch, as we can see in these four examples. A variant of um, dermatofibromas with extensive scarlet patch is the presence of multiple scarlet patches. According to Kelati et al., this pattern is more commonly associated with atrophic dermatofibromas. Sometimes, as we can see in this case, a patient with multiple dermatofibromas can show all the patterns seen so far. Okay, returning to the typical pattern, instead of the white scarlet patch, we can observe this structure which, which has been called white network. This structure is composed of white lines and brown holes and is considered a variation of the classic white scarlet patch because the histopathologic correlation is similar. However, this feature appears to be particularly interesting in light of differential diagnosis of other pigmented lesions. As you all know, there is a similar dermoscopic feature called negative pigment network that is seen in many melanomas and speech read nearby. Dermoscopically, the distribution of the negative pigment network is more irregular and the lines of the network are light, not white. Of course, in doubtful cases, a scission is mandatory. We can find this white network most commonly in the center of dermatofibromas, surrounding, surrounded by a delicate pigment network, as we can see in these two cases. But we can also see a white network located throughout the lesion. In other cases of dermatofibromas, instead of the central white scarlet patch, we can observe this central red blueies or red violaceous homogeneous pigmentation or a structureless area, sometimes with chrysalis or white shiny streaks, as we can see here. In our study, all dermatofibromas with this pattern were aneurysmal dermatofibromas. The histopathologic correlation of this structure could be the presence of the prominent blood file species and intra and extracellular hemosiderin deposits. Moreover, this structure is usually associated with a peripheral pigment network and different vascular structures that form a multi-component pattern. An often diagnosis of melanoma cannot be rolled out and excision should be performed. Here we can see another case of aneurysmal dermatofibroma with a multi-component pattern, okay? which has to be excised, and it's interesting because we can see that hemosiderotic and aneurysmal dermatofibromas represent different stages of the same disease. Because 
we found a hemosiderotic dermatofibroma in this area and aneurysmal dermatofibroma in this other area of the same lesion. It's important to know that some aneurysmal dermatofibromas can show a total homogeneous area with different colors, red is violaceous, blue is, and even with a rainbow appearance without peripheral reticulation. And it's important uh, that not only uh, aneurysmal dermatofibromas can display a pattern composed of a homogeneous or a structureless area which occupies the whole lesion. Here we can see four dermatofibromas with this pattern which are not aneurysmal dermatofibroma. We can see a total brownish structureless area in some dermatofibromas, a total pinkish structureless area in other dermatofibromas, and what color is this located on the right? Yellow. And what kind of dermatofibromas will show a yellowish structureless area which occupies the whole lesion? A lipidized dermatofibroma. Here we can see another example of dermatofibroma with this yellowish pigmentation. And if we perform a biopsy here, this area might correspond histologically to areas of lipidization with lipophages and totem, totem cells, as we can see in this slide. Remember, if we see yellowish color in the context of a dermatofibroma, this may be a lipidized dermatofibroma. Well, in this slide, we can see all the schematics of dermatofibromas. We have reviewed most of them in this talk. And finally, there are lesions that show an atypical pattern that includes those cases with atypical or irregularly distributed structures, as we can see in this other slide. Here we have four more examples of atypical dermatofibromas, which were found in 6% of all dermatofibromas of the study. Several authors have even observed higher percentages of atypical dermatofibromas. Some of these strange dermatofibromas can display a very disturbing appearance. In many cases, it's difficult to distinguish dermatofibromas from melanomas. For example, what do you think about this pigmented lesion? Is this a melanoma or a dermatofibroma? We can see an asymmetric lesion with an atypical pigment network, small blotches, blue-gray dots and globules, and this lateral scar-like depigmentation. Dermoscopically, it seems to be a melanoma, but it's a dermatofibroma with a lot of pigmentation of hyperplastic red ridges, which explains the atypical dermoscopic image. Finally, in conclusion, the classic pattern of dermatofibroma continues to be the most common, but there are other patterns that melanoma could share. And to be on the safe side, Site, we should remove all this lesion. Thank you for your attention.